أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله سيدنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نجني بكي جل جب فتبارك الله دنيو سنيو بيبيت حومي سرني مرجام مسي أكبولم بدائرة أهل تيوان أكفدريشن بي جميع بي نجلين دنيو دلين زيارة Nyingi fanya una kana kwa papa bipsi, bu sering baba kwa Muhammadul Mansur al Khalifa, fatabara kwa Allahu papa Yusuf Job, di dom, domam, di lepom, di gorom, ni ya bolo ni ya upuma na feke, konferansi bu magbinga hamenteni, mumle ni na borom ham ham yine kuche Afrika, nyu nyu. Dajefi, wara wata ni chi ninko wa hichi angle, fatwara kula hu, mui tolerance and peaceful coexistence in Islam. Manam atasa mu, taayush asilmi il Islam. Lolo nane kutembure re re, na nyunyep lolo nywar. Dunia kau yang mana cuci di tak dengan wahai al khalku kulluhu majalullah. Masya Allah, kau nak lalu mata mana ni dajefi pulje magel bis bobo dunia ansur ni barom tabarak utar dah cipta ufir apa isi. Wah ini ham nyingi nyawi cinti galu khalif jeneral di tijan misri ni babakar Muhammadul Mansur. Ak ayat kami ibah yutar di maulana syekh al haji Malik dabbah misri ni babakar Abdul Aziz. Sering Pak Malik Muhammadul Habib, Sering Imam Usman Muhammadul Habib, aksen rakunya menyep agjaborga. Dilihat jam wujud nak nak hamna ni matu ini, kau anjing jam. Fatwarak Allah. Lol dal modon tangki. Ici Gambia, di nu boki Gambi, di nu presiden bi, di nu mem minister binga hamen tani. Fatwarak Allah, mui Sherif, His Excellency Sherif Abba, Sanyang, binga hamen tani mui yone invitasi nabi, mui kili fagu magdi di. Fatwarak Allah, Son Excellence Muhammad Al Kabir Al Isa, Mamoi Presiden Ligbi. Fatwarak, Mamoi Sekretaris Jeneral Ulik Mondial Islamik. Walau Ligbi, biar kami tanya, Mamoi le Juli tiap dal. Ligbi boleh Juli tiap. Cikola, Fatwarak Allah. Assalamualaikum. Jadi jadi senyum lagi. Jadi jadi Fatwarak Allah. Kon, lulu mana kon jadi? Kan abang abang yang kami lihat kan abang yang kian top jerek. Cuba terus ibu ini siapa lagi yang kami lihat? Assalamualaikum. وسليم يا إلهي وجزيا أبدا عنا محمدا مختار في القدم مولاي وسليم يا إلهي وجزيا أبدا أنا محمد أنا مختار في الأقدام مودن من بعد طاعة ولا من ثم ستة أشهر نور الراء كان في الله سوق الأمياء
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh mbokki jilli di ñangi leen di nuyu di leen ziar di leen balaq bu baax ñi ngi fessi al badru tv de fess islamic online tv indi gambia yalla def nak tay nak ñi nek fi nga xamanteni mo di xol bu tedd bi bu set bu sel bi nga xamanteni barakallah ñi ngi fi amal programme bu reuy bi di nga xamanteni mo di islamic conference ay kilif yu bari joge ci ay reew yi fassanti ko tabarakallah ñi and fass yeen and ak yeen xol li ñi nga xamanteni mom la president adama boro organiser ci lu am solo leen ñi ngi koy nuyu diko ziar ak mbollam ñu mo bokk njabooti ak waa reew mi yep tabarakallah wa badru tv ñew tabarakallah and ak wa hadratu tijaniya bu cheikh said al hadji malik mi wa tiawani khalifa yu teddi yitew nga xamanteni serigne mbi khalifa serigne ali tijan serigne baba kasi mohammed ibn masur yebal fi ay rakam ay njabotam ku su melni serigne mu lay seen mu jitta delegation bi ñom pa yusuf djob ak ñom tabarakallah serigne habib ñi ngi leen di dalal ak jamm ñi and ak ñom ci hotel bi dalal ñewal fi ci place bi nga xamanteni mo di hol bi inshallah rabbi ñi fas yene indi leen li fi am waye mbok yi tamit ngeen bañ fa tane inshallah rabbi ahlu tiawan federation bi ci gambia ñi nga am programme bu ñu wajal 28 january moy gamu ko mak bo xamanteni mbollam ñu aji tiawan ñing ko wara amal inshallah rabbi 28 january mi ngi amé fi nga xamanteni mo di ci stadium bakaw nak ñepp baye xel ginnaw programme bi inshallah bu neexa yalla assalamu alaykum warahmatullah mbok yi comme nañ leen ko waxe won ñi ngi fi ci place bi ci hall bi ñi and ak suñu yaay di suñu wéju di su kilif suñu kilifa di suñu serigne muy aja soxna anti adulet si tabarakallah ñi gën ko rañé fi sa hadratu cheikh seydul hadji malik mu nekkal fi gammi tabarakallah di liggé liggé bu am solo anté ñi ngi leen nuyu bu baax wa badru tv ñol ñoo sét ci programme bi machallah machallah alhamdullilah rabbil alamin walaykum assalam warahmatullah sante yalla bu baax machallah machallah ñu ngi leen di fay bu baax 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 def anté kon sa téway ci bis bi tay lan la wa wa téway té té ci bis bi day mom dafa nekk té bis bu fort ci diiné ji diiné islam suma téway nekk ñaari baxana ba ñetta sax bi ci jitu moy bok ci organizing committee bi nga xamne sub committee bi nga xamne ñu am ay transport moto bolé auto bo fi gis rek ñun ñoy committee bi nga xamne moko won rek lay jëli gan ñi yobul seen aéroport yobul kenn ku nekk fa nga wara nekk tuba kala ma sha Allah ma sha Allah bi pari tamit am jappalé walé bi committee bi ci biri gan ñi waaw yalla dogal nak comme ñun kenn ku nekk xamne di fiñ bok am wi ci wawon tuba kala ma sha Allah di jabotu ci sidi hajj malik riya taala anhu di jabotu ci babakar ci ak famille bi yeb tuba kala ma sha Allah suma borom keddi serigne mo jamm ci tuba kala ma sha Allah di wajul ci ñom alhamdullilah ñu denkama ñewi waati waawon tuba kala ma sha Allah ma dox ci yalla sutural ma ci ma dox ci be khalifa bi serigne babakar ci mansour ma ngi profilo diko ziar di ñaan bu yaga fi lote anda wer yalla dogal mu yabalal ma ñetti Mashallah Kilifa Kilifa di Seigne Moulay si Seigne Bipsi di Domam Seigne Papi Soufa Diop Mashallah di Seigne Djarbat di Seigne Koro Barakallah Mashallah Ak Seigne Moulay Jamba si Fekale nyu fekase kofi Nyum nyum nyu anda nyu si Bispi Mashallah Alhamdulillah Ante yalla yalla barke lepe yalla agali ak sogo Ndakh amna ñi nga xamantene joge na ci yeneen rew ñew fi yan yan gan lañ fi sentu tay ji tay kay jinti nañ fi gan ñu bari danaka muslim wol bi yeb ñew fi tejje tay comme ni ko gisé ni muslim wol bi yeb ñew nañ tu barak allah ma sha allah ma sha allah euh muslim wol lit bi ñoo oté wol nañ atuna bi yeb nak ministre ministre of religious affairs ñew nañ ambassade ci ñew nañ mufti yi ñew nañ imam ratib ñew nañ tu barak allah ak seen njabot al kalu chief yeb ñu ne ma sha Allah tay diine islam xewle alhamdullilah wa tuba ñu ne tubaak Allah ma suñu mam yoyu wa ñe seri ñu ne ma sha Allah alhamdullilah ñeb ñu ne fekal suñu tubaak Allah ma sha Allah ma sha Allah jere def comme ni ngeen ko gisse ñi ngi togana suñu yaay ante adulet wax wax yu am solo yi kon nak ante ñi lay ñaana yalla 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 fay la taxaway bi nga am yalla yalla guddal sa fan lol mbébé deg bëgg bëgg yeb yalla agali ko ci daraja yenati sallallahu alayhi wasallam President of the Republic of the Gambia, 
Vice President of the Republic of Gambia, Syria, Libya, and Sudan, service chiefs, regional governors, mayors and chairpersons of councils, President Supreme Islamic Council, Imams and Islamic scholars from the Gambia and across Africa. Good morning to you all. I welcome you to this conference of African Ministers of Religious Affairs and Ulama. And at this point, our chairperson for this occasion this morning is none other than the head of branding and communication. OIC Gambia Secretariat, Mr. Fali Falera, and at this juncture, I have the honor to hand over the podium to him. Mr. Falera, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Sanyam, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. With the permission of His Excellency the President, and our distinguished guest, the Secretary General of the World Muslim League, I would like to respectfully ask this August gathering to rise up and, and observe the national anthems of the brotherly Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and our beloved country, the Republic of the Gambia, by the Gambia Police Band, commencing force with the anthem of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to be followed by the Gambian national anthem. Your Excellency, with your permission. Thank you very much, the Gambia Police Band. You may please resume your seats. Your Excellency.
the representative of the Bishop of Banjo to come and lead us in Christian prayer. Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, we thank you this day for the gift of life and for the gift of nations. We thank you for the Muslim World League and we thank you for brotherly good and love and peace that continue to bring us together to experience your agenda for humanity. Today we welcome them to the peaceful atmosphere of the Gambia, the smiling coast, where we know on your behalf, as host to them, your peace will continue to reign in their heart, drawing them to your love, your understanding, and your strength. So we pray that this conference will be a conference where their faith in you will be strengthened, their knowledge of you will be deepened, and Father, their relationship with one another will be further prosperous. So give us this day your presence. Be with us. Be with every nation represented here today. And let the love that is in the Gambia be a love that will continue to strengthen their hearts and give them memories of sweet experiences of this conference. Bless this conference, we ask. The Lord, that which is here, which is of peace and harmony, will be that which will, they will take back to their nations, remembering and knowing that Gambia is a blessed place. So we ask that, Father, in the love that you have given us, in the peace that you have given us, and in the harmony that you have given us, that this conference will end in success, and prosperity and fruitfulness will be that which we, they will take back home. Bless us all, we ask you, for we know that your love for us amounts everything that we would ever need. Provide for us, protect us, and Father, grant us what we would need for the agenda of this conference. And may all of us be happy, because you, God, are here with us. We thank you for this opportunity, and we ask your blessings upon us. We pray in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you very much. The representative of the Bishop of Banjul, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mufalli Fadera. I am the head of brand and communications for the Gambia OIC Secretariat. And I am deeply humbled to be asked to chair the proceedings of this August gathering. It is indeed one of the greatest honors of my life. I would like to welcome all of you to the Conference of African Ulama and Religious Affairs Ministers here in Banjul at the prestigious Sadawda Karaba Jawara International Conference Center. This event is organized by the Muslim World League in collaboration with the government of the Gambia through the Ministry of Lands, Regional Government, Religious and NGOs Affairs. Gathered before you, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, are 1,500 local and international delegates to discuss the theme, promotion of peace, understanding and unity among communities and nations. And underlining this theme is the belief that extending the bridge of dialogue and cooperation is the only way we can realize a world full of peace, justice, and peaceful coexistence. My job today is quite a simple one. Like I said, I will be the MC of the day. And at this juncture, I would like to take you through the program briefly before we go into the program proper. After the rendition of the national anthems and the Quranic and the opening prayers, the next item on the agenda is the recitation of the Holy Quran. We will have a volunteer who is a winner of an international Quranic recital competition in Saudi Arabia to come next. After that, we will see visual documentaries of uh, Gambia and the Muslim world and another documentary from the Muslim World League. These are very short documentaries. That will be followed by remarks by the Minister of Lands, Regional Government, Religion and NGO Affairs of the Republic of the Gambia, followed by a statement from the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Republic of the Gambia, the vote of thanks by the President of the Gambia Supreme Islamic Council, and statement by the General Secretary, Secretary General of the Muslim World League and Chairman of the Organization of World Muslim Ulama, His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Abdul Qadir Al-Ishar. The keynote address will follow, delivered by His Excellency, 
the President of the Republic, Mr. Adam Abaro. Then we have exchange of gifts, adoption of the market declaration, and then we will gather outside for the photo session. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to go straight into the program and invite the, uh, the um, um, Honorable Scholar who will lead us into the Quranic recitation. The gentleman, like I said earlier, participated in an international Quranic recital competition and he emerged the winner across the world. Please welcome. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم وكان الله سميعا عليما Ministers and all visiting ministers, ministers or members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Chief Justice, Special Envoy and Staff of the Muslim World League, the ulamas, both local and international, senior government officials here present, service chiefs and all securities here present, President of the Supreme Islamic Council, Chairman of the Christian Council, your Excellency Ambassador of the Gambia to Saudi Arabia, also Your Excellency the Ambassador Shaq Mafai Mauritania, politicians and head of political parties here present, members of the local organizing committee, 
governors, chiefs, alikalis, imam ratib and various religious leaders and representatives. Women groups present here, the media, students, support staff, the OIC and other institutions. All other protocols duly and respectfully observed. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to all. It's a great pleasure for me and my ministry on behalf of His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia and the entire Gambian people to welcome you all to this very important and landmark conference targeting African ministers responsible for religious affairs and ulamas with the theme Peace or Promoting Peace, Harmony, Unity and Diversity among Muslims and ulama, Muslim ulama and the rest of the world. To be more specific, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome His Excellency the Secretary General and all the staff of the Muslim World League here present. My colleague ministers and all Muslim ministers from other states in Africa and the diplomatic and consular corps, local visiting ulamas from our regions and all other delegates, religious leaders and local and international present here. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference received delegates from 38 African countries, with a total of 11 ministers as head of delegations. Countries present here today, Your Excellency, include Ghana, Mauritania, Senegal, Liberia, Libya, Sudan, Algeria, Guinea-Bissau, Uganda, Kenya, Malawi, Lesotho, Eswatini, Ivory Coast, Mozambique, Sicilis, Namibia, Botswana, Ivad, Benin, Nigeria, Zambia, Congo Brazzaville, Algeria, Sudan, Congo, Niger, Mali, Morocco, Madagascar, Angola, Burkina Faso, Togo, Comoros, Djibouti, Rwanda, Ethiopia, Tanzania, which comprises approximately 81 delegates from our brothers and sisters in Africa. Distinguished delegates, you must agree with me that such dialogue is frequently needed to help clear the unnecessary misconceptions and enhance unity and mutual coexistence among the Muslims in the world. And not only Muslims, but Muslims with their neighbors. Ladies and gentlemen, as we later deliberate at plenary, I urge all participants to participate fully and take this rare opportunity to network much as possible, as much as possible, to enhance future engagements and learning best practices from each other. I think this is exemplary to participants who we met in Mauritania and Togo, who greatly helped in facilitating and making this program a great success, Your Excellency. You are all aware of the challenges currently facing Muslims as a result of misinterpretation due to the lack of understanding of some Muslims and non-Muslims of the importance and values of this noble religion. I mean religion. As a result, our collective responsibility as ministers responsible for religious affairs and ulamas is to serve as linkage and shoulder the responsibility of unifying the Islamic ulamas and the whole world at large. Today should be a great day for forgiveness in this country. This occasion is one rarely available in any country in the world. We are here to say our peace, love, and unity. Therefore, I urge all of us to forgive and accept each other. <coughs> Your Excellency, this thing is case present here. This day we will live to celebrate, and it's a regular I mean, day in the history of this country. On that note, I welcome all of you until present. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister for Religious Affairs, Honorable Abbasadam, for that welcoming remarks. Indeed, it is very apt. I would like to invite the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Honorable Dr. Mamur Tangara, to deliver the statement. Please join me to welcome the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Adam Obaro. Your Excellency, the Secretary General of the World Muslim League, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Karim Al Issa. 
my Lord, the Chief Justice, Excellencies, former Vice President of the Gambia, Honorable Ministers here present, Venerable Religious Leaders and Venerable Traditional Leaders, Members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Service Chiefs, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. It gives me great honor and pleasure to take the floor here today to pay tribute to the man who is behind such a great initiative of bringing together scholars of similar and different faith and culture, His Excellency President Adam Abaro. <coughs> President Adam Abaro is an epitome of tolerance. His capacity to listen and accommodate views is one of his greatest strengths. Tolerance is needed to lead the people when you are a father of the nation. Especially in the historical context of a country like the Gambia, when we find ourselves in the post-TRRC context, a period of healing of a wounded nation, a period where we need to project ourselves into the future and heal the future. Your Excellency, this conference is coming at the right moment to trigger a serious and pertinent conversation between scholars. Your Excellency, at the recently concluded Conference of the United Nations Alliance of Civilization, we had a discussion on the class of civilization, as Samuel Putinton called it. But a great scholar said that civilization cannot clash. This is a class of ignorance. Cultures and civilization are meant to enlighten people and they want to big human family. The dark forces can only be defeated through the dissemination of knowledge. That is why it's mandatory for the Muslim to seek knowledge. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enjoined us to seek knowledge up to China. And in the Mandinka culture, people that we call Silatigis are saying that knowledge is a fire to come throughout our journey in life. A great scholar by the name of Sori Kamara nous rappelle que le savoir est un viatique pour notre traversée de l'existence. Le savoir consiste à se départir de notre incapacité à accepter l'autre, à créer l'unité dans la diversité. And Amadou Ba Ampateba nous rappelle que la lumière au sommet de la montagne est la même. Elle se transforme à travers le prisme ou déformement de nos subjectivités. La quintessence de toutes les religions est la paix. And I will refer you to Surah al Gujarat, verse 13. Et Amadou Ampateba est allé plus loin en comparant le pater chrétien à la fatia. Joignant l'acte à la parole, il a prié pendant la guerre de Yom Kippur au, au sommet du Mont Sinai avec un prêtre chrétien et un rabbin juif. The quest for genuine knowledge is very important to be able, as I said, to separate the wheat from the child, especially in this day and age of artificial intelligence, dominated by social media with the proliferation of influencers good at disseminating false knowledge and fake news. And the Prophet وسلم, during his time said one time and this hadith the, that there are some come deceptive years where the thoughtful shall be deemed liars, while the liars shall be believed. The honest shall be deemed dishonest, while the dishonest honest. And the Ruayubida will speak in this time. The companions ask him, may Allah be pleased with them. What is Ruayubida, O Messenger of Allah? He replied, it's an insignificant man or woman who shall speak on behalf of the general masses. The Ruayubidas are ignorant people who speak about great matters of society, spreading fake news, false information, and ignorance. And I think we've seen that with social media, people claim to be experts in subject matters where they know little about. 
And I will leave you with the words of a great Latin American king, Simon de Bolivar, the Libertador. He said, un pueblo ignorante, as an instrument to see about his propia destruction. An ignorant people is the blind instrument of its own destruction. I have no doubt that all the scholars gathered here are what the Mandinka call the Silatigas, master of art, Mert de Sanchi, in their own rights. And each of them will plant seeds of light to enlighten us and illuminate our past and that of future generations in the journey of life. May the outcomes of the Banyul Conference of the World Muslim League serve as where to come for all the attendees and those who are watching us. And at the recently concluded Alliance of Civilization meeting, the King of Morocco reminded us that la politique part aux citoyens, la religion part à leurs armes, le dialogue part à leur civilisation. Dans toutes les langues, nous devons parler à la paix. And that's coming in the hills of the United Nations resolution, the, the resolution adopted by the United Nations General Assembly resolution A-73-328, initiated by the Kingdom of Morocco and co-sponsored by 90 countries for com to combat hate speech and promote interreligious and intercultural dialogue. May the deliberations of the Banyul Conference clear the way for a peaceful world, where our discordant voices will be synchronized into a beautiful a cappella of love and brotherhood. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, Dr. Mamuru Tangara, for those thought-provoking and uniting remarks. Um, I quote from him, he says, Cultures of civilizations are meant to unite us, not divide us. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. With that said, I have the honor to invite the President of the Gambian Supreme Islamic Council, Mr. Isa Dabo, to deliver his remarks. معالي الأمين العام لرابطة العالم الإسلامي الشيخ الدكتور محمد بن عبد الكريم العيسي حفظه الله تعالى معالي وزير الأراضي والحكم الإقليمي والشؤون الدينية السيد الشريف أبا سانيا معالي وزير الشؤون الخارجية في غامبيا رئيس المحاكم في غامبيا الإمام حسن يالو سادة أصحاب معالي وزراء شؤون الدينية من البلدان الإفريقية الشقيقة سادة الوفود المشاركة في هذا المؤتمر أيها السادة العلماء الأجلاء وأيتها السادة السيدات العالمات الجليلات وأيها الأفضل الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته أما بعد فعسالة أن نفسي ونيابة أن علماء غامبيا وشعب غامبيا على اختلاف أطيافه ونيابة أن حكومتنا الرشيدة بقيادة فخامة رئيس السيد آدم بارو حفظه الله تعالى أحييكم جميعا وأرحب بكم ترحيبا أخويا حارا فأهلا وسهلا بكم في بلدكم الثاني جمهورية غامبيا الصاهل المبتسم كما تلقب لما عرف عنها من سلام وأمن وأمان أرحب بكم إلى هذا المؤتمر التاريخي الذي يضم لأول مرة علماء إفريقيا وقادتها تحت الشعار تعزيز السلام والتفاهم والوحدة بين المجتمعات والأمم أيها السعد الأعزاء إن ديننا الحنيف دين الصلاة والتصاب ودين المحبة والأخوة والرحمة قال تعالى 
وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وليس دين التطرف والعنف والغلو فبيان هذه الحقيقة عن الإسلام كما جمع كما جمعنا هنا إلى جميع الناس في كل مكان من الضروريات الملحة في عالمنا المعاصر وتنظيم هذا المؤتمر إن هو إلا امتداد لما دعت به دعمت به رابطة العالم الإسلامي منذ تأسيسها قبل ستين عام من بيان حقيقة الإسلام وقيمه الصمحة وفق ما جاء في كتاب الله وسنة نبيه المطهر وعليه أتقدم بالشكر الجزيل والتقدير الجليل والعرفان الرفيع إلى رابطة العالم الإسلامي لقيادة أمين أمينها العام على تنظيم هذا المؤتمر وعلى وعلى اختيار غامبيا لاستضافته والذي يتيه لنا فرصة فرصة التعرف على إخواننا من علماء إفريقيا وتحقيق التواصل الإيجابي وخلق التعاون المشترك وتنسيق الجهود والأعمال وتبادل الآراء والخبرات لما يؤذز رهنة المسلمين وأخذ بأيد الناس إلى صراط الله المستقيم وبناء عالم يسوده الأمن والأخوة والصلاة وأملنا كبير في أن جمع علماء على سعيد واحد الذين هم اللبنة الأساسية في بناء القمة والذين هم حماة الدين وهراس العقيدة سيسهم في تضافر الجهود وتوحيد التعقار من أجل التعاون في تحقيق الوهدة في ذل السلام والوئام بين الشعوب في إفريقيا وبين شعوب العالم وأوشي من هذا المنبر حكومات أفريقيا الإناية بأولمائها وتسهيل الطريق أمامهم ليتمكنوا من النهوض بواجبهم الذي توق الله به أعناق العلماء من بيان الحق ونشر الهداية لإتبارهم ورثة الأنبياء ولا شك أن هذا المؤتمر سيؤزج الروابط الدينية والتاريخية والثقافية التي تجمع البلدان الإفريقية من جهة وبينها وبين المملكة العربية السعودية من جهة أخرى وفي الختام in conclusion أتقدم بخالص الشكر والامتنان للمملكة العربية السعودية حكومة وشعبا بقيادة خادم الهرمين الشريفين الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز حفظه الله وولي أهله الأمين محمد بن سلمان حفظه الله على وقوف المملكة الدائم مع الشعوب العالم والشعوب الإفريقية بصفة خاصة وعلى الأخص الشعب الغنبي في جميع مجالات الحياة من تقديم المساعدات الإنسانية والصحية والإغاثية وأهمها تعليم الشعوب الإسلام الصحيح القائم على كتاب الله وسلم حفظ الله المملكة العربية السعودية حكومة وشعبا من كل سوء وحفظ بلادنا وسائر البلدان في العالم ووفق قادتنا للعمل لما يحبه ويبقى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Channel 1 is Arabic, Channel 2 is English, Channel 3 French and Channel 4 is Portuguese so um, the headsets you have next to you will help you to follow the proceedings in any language that you prefer among the four listed. Thank you very much, uh, President Dabo, President of the Sunni Islamic Council Dabo. Um, I now have the honor to invite the Secretary General of the Muslim World League and Chairman of the Organization of Muslim World Muslim Ulama, His Excellency. Dr. Mohammed Abdul Karim Alisa to deliver his statement. Alhamdulillah, wahda, wa salatu wa salam 
على من لا نبي بعده نبينا وسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه فخامة رئيس جمهورية جامبيا السيد آدم باو أصحاب السماحة والفضيلة أصحاب المعالي والسعادة السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أما بعد فنسعد اليوم في رحاب جمهورية جامبيا عزيزة وبرعاية وحضور كريم من فخامة الرئيس نسعد بهذا الجمع العلماء الكبير جمع مبارك لعلماء أفريقيا الذين خدموا أمتهم وأوطانهم بما وهبهم الله من العلم والعمل فهم كما قال الحق جل وعلا رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فكانوا بركة على الجميع لقد نهضوا بفضل الله عليهم بواجبهم الشرعي والوطني على أكمل وجه فكانوا في طليعة مفاخر الأمة الإسلامية ينفون عن كتاب الله تحريف الغالين وانتحال المبطلين وتأويل الجاهلين لعلماء أفريقيا وبشهادتنا في رابطة العالم الإسلامي قدموا صدق حيث أضاء الله بهم الطريق فنشروا الوعي الإسلامي على هدي كريم من كتاب الله جل وعلا وسنة رسوله النبي الأمين صلى الله عليه وسلم فخامة الرئيس الحضور الكريم للعلماء أثر مهم في المجتمعات الإسلامية بل والإنسانية بعموم ويعدون في طليعة الأدوات المهمة في تعزيز اللحمة الإسلامية بعام واللحمة الوطنية بخاصة في تعددها وتنوعها الوطني بأفق الشرعي الواسع كما أنهم على وجه الخصوص هم بفضل الله الذخيرة الإسلامية المعول عليها في مواجهة عاديات التطرف في التدين وهو الذي أساء للإسلام كثيرا ونحن نفرق بين الدين والتدين ولا سيما أن هذه العاديات نشطت في عصرنا الحديث أكثر من غيرها حيث اعتقد من لا يعرف حقيقة الإسلام أن مفاهيم التطرف تمثل حقيقة ديننا وديننا منها براء ومن هنا كانت مسؤولية أهل العلم كبيرة وفي المقابل كان فضلهم مستحقا ويكفي أن الله رفعهم بقوله جل وعلا يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات والله بما تعملون خبير ولا أكثر أهمية في عالم اليوم من التصدي لشبهات أهل الغلوب والتطرف التي حرفوا بها دلالة النصوص الشرعية وأخرجوها عن مقاصدها كما أن أولئك المتطرفين 
عمدوا إلى تلبيس خطر راج مع الأسف على من لا علم عنده وذلك من خلال اجتزاء النصوص الشرعية من جهة وعدم معرفة طرق الاستدلال من جهة أخرى فضلا عن جهلهم أو تجاهلهم لقواعد الإسلام التي شكلت إطارا مهما في الفقه الإسلامي إن اجتماع أهل العلم اليوم يمثل شاهدا حيا على أنهم بفضل الله على قلب واحد من أجل هدف واحد يسيرون سيرة مباركة واحدة فخامة الرئيس الحضور الكريم لا يخفى أن أمتنا الإسلامية تعاني اليوم تحديات كثيرة وهي بحمد الله على ثقة بالله جل وعلا من تجاوزها ولا أخطر من تحدي الأفكار المتطرفة والإرهابية على شباب الأمة الإسلامية ولا مخرج لأولئك المتطرفين والإرهابيين من سهام أهل العلم والإيمان سهام الحق التي تفكك شبهاتهم وأباطيلهم لا مخرج لأولئك سوى اللجوء إلى إثارة العواطف الدينية المجردة عن الوعي وهذا شأن آخر لا علاقة له بالعلم الشرعي بشكل مباشر ولكنه يدخل في مهمة العلماء في الأمر بالتبين وتقصي الحقائق ومن ثم معرفة إنزال الحكم الشرعي على الوقائع والعلماء بما آتاهم الله من فضله على مقدرة تامة في دراسة الوقائع من جميع الأوجه وليس من زاوية واحدة حتى لا نجتزئ النظر الشرعي فالعالم الراسخ يستطلع جميع الزوايا ومن ثم يدرس ويتأمل ثم يحكم بما آتاه الله عز وجل من اجتهاد بحكم الشريعة ومع هذا فإنه نظرا لتعقد المسائل المعاصرة هذا اليوم فإن اللجان والهيئات العلمية هي الأقرب للسلامة في القضايا العامة وما أحسن أن يسدد العالم أخاه العالم وتتامر الصواب في هذا العمل الجماعي أحرى بكثير من العمل الفردي لا سيما كما قلت في القضايا العامة التي تمس الشأن العام سواء في الداخل الوطني أو الداخل الإسلامي أو في العموم الدولي كما أن العالم الراسخ يسعد بالدليل وليس غير الدليل يحترم زملاءه من أهل العلم ويعذرهم ويبدي ما يبي الله جل وعلا به من علم فتح الله به عليه ولا عصمة لأحد بعد نبينا وسيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولهذا فالعالم الراسخ هو الأكثر حفاوة باجتهاد غيره من العلماء وتقديرا وإجلالا وإذا رأيت العلماء يجتمعون على قلب واحد فاعلم أنهم الراسخون الصادقون المخلصون وأن الأمة بخير فمسعدنا في رابطة العالم الإسلامي بمشاركة علماء أفريقيا في إبرام أهم الوثائق الإسلامية في التاريخ المعاصر وهي وثيقة مكة المكرمة 
التي رعاها خادم الحرمين الشريفين الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز ال سعود يحفظه الله وبادر بها سمو ولي عهده الامين رئيس مجلس الوزراء صاحب السمو الملكي الامير محمد بن سلمان بن عبد العزيز ال سعود يحفظه الله ورابطه العالم الاسلامي حسنة من حسنات المملكة العربية السعودية أهدتها للعالم الإسلامي كما سعدنا غاية السعادة بعضوية كوكبة مباركة من علماء أفريقيا الكرام في هيئة علماء المسلمين وفي مجمع الفقه الإسلامي وكانت سعادتنا مضاعفة باعتماد وثيقة مكة المكرمة في تدريب الأئمة في عدد من دول العالم مشمولا ذلك أيضا بدول غير إسلامية وفي خصوص وثيقة مكة المكرمة فإنها بحمد الله نالت من الرواج والتأثير لدى الجميع من مسلمين وغير مسلمين ما جعلنا على يقين تام بانها جاءت في وقت احوج ما تكون الامه الاسلاميه اليه مبرزه حقيقه ديننا الاسلامي مرسخه قيم اعتداله ووسطيته ودعوته لسلام عالمنا ووئام مجتمعاته الوطنيه متناوله أهم القضايا المعاصرة بطرح إسلامي رصين مستنير يكشف رسوخ علماء الأمة الإسلامية وسعة الأفق الشرعي لديهم وهذا هو السبب الذي جعل الدول الإسلامية تقرر بالإجماع تقرر بالإجماع اعتماد هذه الوثيقة ومن ثم الاسترشاد بها في المؤسسات الدينية والتعليمية والثقافية في الدول الإسلامية وذلك باجتماع وزراء خارجيتها في نيام عام 2020 نعم شارك علماء أفريقيا بفاعلية وتأثير كبير في جمع تلك المهام و إدلاء أولئك العلماء باجتهادهم الشرعي مترجمة في تلك الوثيقة التاريخية التي سجلت في التاريخ الإسلامي ضمن طلائع مناقب علماء الأمة وهم من يحسبون في من يحسبون في الصفوف الأولى لمواجهة حملات الكراهية ضد الإسلام الناتجة مع الأسف الشديد عن تصرفات بعض المحسوبين على الإسلام وذلك من خلال بيان أولئك العلماء بيانهم المشرق وكشفهم للحقائق بالبينات والزبور فخامة الرئيس الحضور الكريم من خلال حوارات متعددة مع علماء أفريقيا سعدنا كثيرا بأن أولئك العلماء عقدوا العزم على تشكيل مجلس علماء أفريقيا وذلك انطلاقا من إيمانهم بالمرجعية الدينية والعلمية المتمثلة في قبلتهم الجامعة في مكة المكرمة من المملكة العربية السعودية ليكون ذلك من المجلس في محضن رابطة العالم الإسلامي رعاية وخدمة وهو ما نصت على مضمونه المادة التاسعة والعشرون من وثيقة مكة المكرمة وتسعد رابطة العالم الإسلامي باستضافة سنوية لعلماء أفريقيا لعقد ملتقاهم العلمي في رحاب قبلتهم الجامع 
بمكة المكرمة وعندما نحفل بعلماء أفريقيا فلأنهم أهل لذلك علما وعملا ووجدانا مستصعبين في هذا الهدي النبوي الكريم في هجرة الإسلام الأولى إلى أفريقيا حيث الإنصاف والحكمة والرأي السديد والنصرة في الحق كانت الحفاوة بالحق الإسلامي من لدن غير المسلمين فكيف هو هذا الحق اليوم في يد أهل العاملين الصادقين في هذه القارة الميمونة التي بارك الله في رحمها وحضنها ومحتواها وفق الله الجميع لكل خير وجعل أعمالنا نافعة ولوجهه الكريم خالص وتقدير خاص وتثمين كبير لفخامة رئيس جمهورية كاميا على هذه الرعاية الكريمة والحضور المبارك الذي تشرف به الجميع في هذا اليوم والشكر ثانية لفخامته على ما وجه به من حفاوة الاستقبال وكرم الضيافة والرعاية واختيار جمهورية جامبيا هو توافق عموم علماء أفريقيا وتثمين رابطة العالم الإسلامي لجمهورية جامبيا في تمثيلها للأنموذج الإسلامي في الوئام الوطني وفي الاعتداء الإسلامي ضمن مجموعة مباركة من الدول الأفريقية مقدرين تقديرا عاليا ما بذله فخامة الرئيس وحكومته الرشيدة من الجهود لعقد هذا المؤتمر وما بذلوه من العمل الجاد لإنجاحه فأجزل الله مثوبتكم فخامة الرئيس وأجزل مثوبة حكومتكم الرشيدة ووفق الله الجميع لكل خير كما أن الشكر موصول كذلك لهذا الجمع الميمون لعلماء أفريقيا فبارك الله فيهم بارك الله في علمهم وعملهم واجتهادهم في عمر مديد وعمل صالح متقبل مبرور أسأل الله عز وجل أن يكلل هذا الجمع الطيب بنتائج يطمح إليها الجميع من خلال فهوم هذه الكوكبة العلمية من الراسخين في العلم من علماء أفريقيا الذين نعتز بهم ونفتخر بهم في عالمنا الإسلامي والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Your Excellency, Secretary General of the Muslim World League, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Karim Ali Shah, you will agree with me that that was indeed a befitting tribute to the theme of today's discussion, which is promotion of peace, understanding and unity among communities and nations. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Can you please join me to give me a big round of applause, please? Next on the agenda is the keynote address by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Mr. Adam Obaro. Please join me to welcome His Excellency, Adam Obaro.
Honorable Minister of Lands, Regional Government and Religious Affairs. All other Honorable Ministers present. Members of the Diplomatic and Councilor Corps, the International and National Plan. Honorable Religious Leaders, International Invited Guests, Political Party Leaders here present, Senior Government Officials and Service Chiefs. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of the government and the people of the Gambia, including my humble self, I most heartily welcome you all for this important conference. Even have brought together people from different regions and countries, as well as different social and professional backgrounds to network and deliberate around the team, promotion of peace, understanding and unity among communities and nations. As wars and conflicts of various types bring lives and bring suffering to the global community. There could not be no better team for the occasion than this. Before proceeding, I must pay special tribute to the Muslim World League for sponsoring the conference. To be academic, this philanthropic organization has consistently engaged in tremendous life-changing activities around the world. We are particularly thankful for that they identify the Gambia to host this significant conference. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the complexities confronting us globally have a telling effect on religion, making the task of the Muslim ulama profoundly complex and enormous. Because life is also, it is impractical to divorce religious beliefs from culture and social settings, or religious obligations from civil responsibilities. We must blend and balance the two sides of life harmoniously to succeed both ways. Reflecting on the continent, Africa has been the object of infiltration and exploitation of various forms. It has been a battleground for contending war powers and the epicenter for ethnic rivalry and conflicts, leading to the fluidity of our cultures and values. With the infiltration of various influences, Muslims continue to, divide, to be divided in different sects and even fight each other like enemies. Despite all fears and challenges, there are a lot of opportunities to reverse these trends. Formal educational institutions, for instance, have the potential to strengthen Islamic knowledge and complete the efforts preserve the main teachings of Islam. Muslims, especially the youth and elite, will have many options to build their capacity. 
balance their worldview and values, and resist adopting non Islamic ways of life. Through these openings, more African Muslims, including scholars, can serve as agents of peace and unity to further fortify Islam and fabric and the fabric of African communities and nations. There is no doubt that Islamic thought and practice continue to influence our socio-economic, political and legal systems. This notwithstanding, the sharp divisions and divergent views and interpretations among the ulama undermine solidarity among Muslims on the continent and beyond. The dilemma, therefore, continue to center on how to leverage the progressive aspects of science, technology, digitization, modern thought, and best practices without compromising on the basic principles of Islam. We try without trying to preempt the deliberations that will follow this open center. I want the African ulama to collaborate more closely with him and with their counterparts in other parts of the world to be truly part of the global community. Yes protect basic principles of Islam. Let us harness the media to repeal attacks made against Islam. While educating and creating better awareness of the beauty and good that this great religion brings to humankind. It is our collective duty to run institutions that effectively educate the people to make them better world citizens, better Muslims, and better human beings who can live with their neighbors and compatriots peacefully and productively. Furthermore, we must leverage global agreements and structures to promote, establish, and sustain peace, understanding, and unity on the continent and the world as a whole. These are among the many issues that the ulama need to examine thoroughly to bring about deeper insights into the religion and generate knowledge. Application in accordance with Islamic principles and in compliance with global commitments. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, Islam provides a package for a complete lifestyle. It propagates tolerance and compassion and teaches how to relate to oneself, family, neighbors, fellow citizens, the opposite sex, and the people who share or differ with our thinking, opinions, and beliefs. As human beings, we should accept and accommodate the reality of our similarities and differences. So its characteristics should remind us to acknowledge each other's strengths and weaknesses, and most significantly, the oneness of other. Our beliefs and differences should not translate into undue hostility or be used against innocent people to denounce or shame them. Their speech and the abuse of one's influence, the media, and the platforms at our disposal should be, should, should be condemned and unanimously discouraged. Our strong commitment to our beliefs should indicate the level of our steadfastness, but must not be used to condemn divergent beliefs and faiths. Most religious conflicts result from intolerance and sometimes the passion of worldly interests. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our survival as a species and our development efforts, progress, and spiritual journeys as communities and nations depend on peace and stability. Both of these are influenced by understanding and unity. 
for humankind to succeed together, we must communicate, cooperate, share positive trade among ourselves, and allow anyone to live a comfortable life. As a community, Muslims have to confront challenges to stability in our various countries. Secure, security of life and property, intellectual pursuits, and enjoyment of freedoms, rights, and privileges. On the global stage, crisis management calls for legitimate collective action. In fostering this, we need to harness the necessary challenges to address matters of common concern. Formal and non-formal institutions, structures and organizations are examples of the challenges we utilize in this respect. To promote peace, understanding and unity, it is a precondition to promote love and respect. Fight hate, square conflicts, and recognize the dignity and honor of every human. Likewise, we can effectively foster understanding through genuine life, communication, and productive and peaceful <coughs> The ulama have a huge role to play in all of this. Upon them is entrusted the task of interpreting the teachings of Islam, handling imagined issues, enhancing interfaith dialogue, and settling hostilities. Although it is practically prudent to avoid subjecting orders to outright condemnation, the ulama have to be firm on the fundamentals of the religion. In the Muslim world, the ulama are the pillars, mouthpieces, trustees of the group. Hence, they bear the biggest responsibility on religious matters. Indeed, people look up to them as role models of exemplary character. This is an enormous responsibility, but it is the most honorable tax any servant Allah can solve. I am certain that all of you are aware that carrying out this noble tax implies providing guidance that harmoniously, spiritually, and world matters. Islam is a complete way of life. In order to preserve the positive image of Islam, it is wise to leverage the tools and opportunities available. Share knowledge and all regular consultations. Monitor media content and review relevant print matters and curriculum matter materials on Islam. Ministers responsible for religious affairs in our respective countries have a role in facilitating these processes. They should work towards creating an enabling environment through their various governments to accommodate religious tolerance. Their ministries should avail themselves and their good offices and services to all religions for responsible and inclusive religious governance. All citizens, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, should feel accommodated and cared for by their governments, which in turn would generate confidence and trust in our governments. We have a common ground in that we are all human beings, and no creature ranks higher than being a servant of Allah. Thus, this should unify us. Islam invites all of us to the path of peace. Grounded in self submission it upholds the principles of non compulsion and spreading the word of the words of the Almighty Allah through wisdom and knowledge, based on the sound understanding of the deep. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in the Gambia, we are fortunate that although over 90 percent of the population are Muslims. We coexist peacefully despite our religious differences. We thank Allah for this blessing 
and robbing the people for their religious tolerance. Our institutions, laws, policies, and programs are blind to religion, and all citizens enjoy equal rights, equal privileges, and equal status, and equal services. We have mutual respect for one another and do not interfere in the religious acts of the people, provided that they do not contravene the law. These factors engender peace, understanding, and unity. We appreciate and commend the religious leaders and all Gambians for their contribution to preaching and spreading peace and tranquility in the country. I urge all of us, especially Ulama, to exploit the good and best practices land and linkage is created here as a means of fostering religious tolerance in Africa and the world at large. Eminent scholars, we appreciate your efforts, respect your views, honor your status in society, and encourage you to remain steadfast and focused. The fact that there are ministerial portfolios for religion on the continent indicates that you have the support of your respective governments. The relationship between the two bodies remain healthy, strong, and productive for the greater good. I invite you, the international guests, to enjoy all that the Gambia offers. Feel at home and come back as often as you wish. We welcome you with open arms and pray that you have very fruitful, blessed deliberations that will contribute to making the world a better place for mankind. With these reflections and words of welcome, I have the singular honor of declaring this conference of African Ulama and ministries and ministers of religious affairs officially open. May Allah bless all of us. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Can you please rise up and give him a standing ovation for a wonderful statement? The President said Islam teaches tolerance and compassion. I guess he could not have said it uh, any better. The President also challenged, please, as uh, you, you may sit down. The President also challenged us to create awareness of the beauty of our beloved religion, Islam. Thank you for so much, Your Excellency, for those apt remarks. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce that we have about 3,000 people here at the Sadara Karabai Jawara International Conference Centre to witness this event. We have uh, multiple spillover rooms and all of them are full to capacity. Um, thank you to the Ministry and all other organisers that facilitated the arrival and the participation of all and sundry. I've also been informed and I would like to recognize the presence of the representative of the President of the Republic of Senegal, um, His Excellency Professor Abdulaziz Kebe. He is here representing the President of Senegal. Welcome, Your Excellency. I've also been informed of the uh, attendance of the Khalif General of Medina Bainas. He also leads a powerful delegation from Senegal. Welcome, Your Excellency. We also have huge delegations from all the venerable religious houses from Gambia and from our neighboring countries, uh, Senegal in particular, from Tuba, Tiwamon, and across the board. So welcome to all of you, and thank you for uh, joining us. According to the program guide, we've now reached the point where Their Excellencies, um, Dr. Mohammed Abdul Karim Alisa, and His Excellency, the President of the Republic, will exchange gifts. Um, Dr. Mohammed Abdul Karim Alisa will first present his gifts, and I will call on the protocol to assist me to um, hand over the gifts um, to Their Excellency so that the exchange of gifts can take place. Gift being presented to His Excellency, the President, has a citation that I would like to read for all and sundry. It reads, a testimonial of sincere appreciation from His Excellency Sir Dr. Mohammed bin Abdul Karim Al Isa, 
Secretary General of the Muslim World League and Chairman of the Organization of Muslim Scholars, presented to His Excellency Adam Abaro in honor and with deep appreciation of the distinguished public also has um, a gift of appreciation to be presented to Dr. There is also a citation um, The citation on the award being presented by His Excellency President Adam Abaro to Dr. Mohammed Alisa reads, Award of Recognition. The President of the Republic of the Gambia, His Excellency Adam Abaro, grants His Excellency Sir Dr. Mohammed bin Abdul Karim Alisa, Secretary General of the Muslim World League and Chairman of the Organization of Muslim Scholars. This merit reward as the World Peace Ambassador from the African world in recognition of his distinguished efforts in spreading a culture of peace and harmony in the world with balanced, moderate thought, confronting extremist ideology and building partnership between all religions. That was the citation on the award presented by His Excellency President Adam Abaro to His Excellency um, Dr. Mohammed Abdul Karim Ali Shah. Please. Another one, please, please. With that being done, the next item on the agenda is the adoption of the market declaration. And this activity will be spearheaded and conducted by the Minister responsible for religious affairs in the Gambia, Honorable Sheriff Abbasani. Under the umbrella of the Muslim World League, convened between the 22nd to 24th Ramadan. 1948, corresponding to the 27th, 29th May 2019. We may not be able to read the whole chapter, but we can read the last paragraphs of the chapter. Paragraph 28 reads, we should establish an international forum to promote constructive dialogue among youth inside and outside the Muslim communities. Also 29, we should strive beyond resolution, rhetorical initiatives and programs, and rhetorical proclamations to achieve effective and authentic results that advance world peace and security, and fight techniques of inhalation, ethnic cleansing, forced migration, human trafficking, and illegitimate abortion. Only learned scholars, such as, the, such as those gathered at the conference and agreeing to this charter, can speak in the name of the Muslim Ummah or any matter pertaining to its affairs. We share the common religion and human objectives to advance the interest of all. We recognize that this necessitates the participation of all without exclusion, racism, discrimination against anyone, irrespective of religion, ethnicity, or color. Blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his family and his companions. This is issued in Mecca and Mukarram in the vicinity of the Holy Kaaba by the Conference on the Charter of Mecca convened on the 16th, 24th to 24th Ramadan, 1448, corresponding to 27th and 29th May, 2019. Your Excellency, Your Excellency, this thing is just present here. This is the Charter of Marker, and I request from this humble body to please raise up our right hands in acknowledging this charter for its declaration. Please pay your raise. I thank you all. Thank you very much, Honorable Abbasanian Minister responsible for religious affairs for conducting that um, program. We have now come to the tail end of the opening ceremony, and I have a small announcement to make. His Excellency the President will be joined by the High Table and the respective heads of country delegations outside for um, uh, a photo session.